Adobe Lightroom has a new AI-driven denoising feature, and I think it's pretty good. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. In this video, I'm going to take a look at the brand new AI-driven denoising feature in Lightroom. And I'm also going to compare it to DxO Puro 3 and Topaz Photo AI. And by the way, I do have affiliate links for both DxO and Topaz down below. So if you decide to buy either one, please use the links down below. Adobe has often been criticized for having a pretty mediocre denoising feature in Lightroom. But last month in April 2023, Lightroom got a new update. And with that update, Lightroom got a new AI-driven denoising feature. Lightroom is a fully featured raw developer and archiving app. And also Pure Raw 3 and Photo AI can do a few more things in addition to denoising. But in this video, I'm only going to take a look at the noise reduction feature on these apps to keep it simple. Let's first have a look at how the new AI-driven denoising works in Lightroom. First, you go to the develop module and go to the detail panel on the right side of the screen. And there you can see noise reduction and denoise button. You hit the denoise button and a new pop-up window opens. There is a relatively small preview window that lets you evaluate what the denoising is doing. There are two other grayed out options and you can access those options by deselecting the denoise option. The first extra option is raw details and that will add a little bit of extra sharpness and crispness to your picture. That is on by default. You can deselect that if you want. I recommend you leave it on. The other extra selection is super resolution, but you can't use that together with the new denoise feature. So leave that unchecked if you want to use the denoise feature. There is only one slider to control the amount of denoising and based on my experience so far, 50 is a good value to start with. And if you still think there is too much noise in your picture, you can dial in some more denoising. And if you think 50 is too much, then you can dial in a little bit less noise reduction. Once you're happy with the amount of denoising, you hit the enhance button and the result will be saved as a new DNG file. And now let's see how the new feature works and how it compares to DxO Puro 3 and Topaz Photo AI. Here is my first test picture. It's a portrait of a friend shot on the Sony ZV-1 camera at ISO 6400. It's a raw picture straight from the camera, only Adobe default settings applied in Lightroom. And as you can see, it's a little bit noisy because of the relatively high ISO value for such a tiny sensor camera. On the left, we can see the original picture. On the right, we can see the new picture after Adobe denoising treatment using the value 50 on the slider. As you can see, the result is pretty impressive. The background is almost noiseless and all in all, the details on the face look pretty decent considering the quite poor quality of the original. Here we have two different results from Adobe denoising treatment. In the picture on the left, I used the value 50 on the slider, and in the picture on the right, I used the value 75 on the slider. Now when we zoom in, we can see that the face looks pretty similar on both, not much difference regarding noise or detail. The background in the right side picture looks virtually noiseless. There is still a tiny, tiny bit of noise visible, but you could make even that disappear if you increased the denoising value 
past 75. My opinion is that the new Adobe Denoise does a really really nice job here. And now let's compare these results to the result from DxO Puro 3 and Topaz Photo AI. On the left we can see the Adobe denoising result using the 50 value on the slider. On the right side we can see DxO Puro 3 result using the D'XD denoising module. With the Pure Raw 3 I left all the default lens corrections on. I think they both look pretty similar, no significant difference there. Both look really really good, to my eyes at least. There is a good amount of detail and sharpness in both pictures. But when we look at the background we can see that there is a little bit more noise in the Adobe picture, but I was using the value of 50 on the slider. If I increased the value I would get rid of the noise altogether. However, when I zoom into the lower right corner of the picture we can see that there is this funny artifact in the DxO Puro 3 picture. It looks like the application can't really decide what to do in this part of the picture for whatever reason. It looks really clean and nice in the Adobe Denoise result. Regarding sharpness and noise reduction, both pictures look pretty good to me and pretty equal, but it looks like Pure Raw 3 has some difficulties in some parts of this picture. And I think Adobe Denoise performs better in this case because there are no artifacts whatsoever in the Adobe Denoise picture. Here again on the left side is the Adobe Denoise result with the 50 value on the slider. On the right side we can see Topaz Photo AI result using autopilot settings, which means uh, fully automatic settings, whatever the application suggests with this particular picture. First, when we zoom into the face, the beard looks really crisp and sharp on the right side picture from Topaz Photo AI, but when we look at the eyebrows and the frame of the glasses, we can see that those look a little bit mushier in the Topaz AI picture. So the face looks a little bit better in my opinion uh, after the Adobe Denoise treatment. The outline of my model's ear looks so much better in the Adobe picture. It's uh, smooth and even. It's a little bit like a ragged edge in the Topaz AI picture. Also the background in the Topaz AI picture has this funny pattern. It looks like fake leather or something and it definitely should not look like that. Here on the left we again have the Adobe Denoise results with the value of 50 on the slider. And on the right side I have another picture from Topaz Photo AI. In this picture I manually increased the noise reduction to value 70. And now let's have a look at the result. The outline of the ear is a little bit better now in the Topaz AI picture. And the background does not have that fake leather pattern anymore. This result from Topaz AI is definitely better than the first one with autopilot settings, but still I think Adobe Denoise does a better job here, at least in my opinion, and I'm really impressed. Here's my second sample picture. This is a night or evening picture from my iPhone 10, and that is not a great low light camera, at least by modern standards. And as you can see the original has quite a bit of noise and lack of detail or sharpness. Here on the left side is the original and on the right side is the Adobe Denoise treatment using the value 60 on the slider. And as we zoom in we can see that pretty much all the noise has disappeared and now the picture looks much more presentable and better to my eyes at least. The denoising treatment did not uh, destroy any of the detail, but the end result looks a little bit soft still. I could sharpen the result in Lightroom later if I wanted to, but straight after the denoising treatment it looks still a slightly soft to my taste and it lacks certain crispness. Here on the left we can see the 
Adobe Denoise result with the value 60 on the slider and on the right we can see the DxO D'3 result using the D'XD noise reduction module. In this picture it's pretty clear that the DxO Puro picture looks better. There is no noise visible but there is clearly much more detail in the picture and all in all the picture looks crisper and sharper. So in this case I'd say Puro 3 does a better job than Adobe Denoise. Here on the left again we can see the Lightroom Denoise result using the value 60 on the slider and on the right side we can see Topaz Photo AI picture using autopilot settings. For whatever reason the Topaz Photo AI picture is also a little bit darker, perhaps a half a stop, two thirds of a stop or so. Let's zoom in and see how they look. The noise has disappeared in both pictures and the amount of detail and sharpness looks pretty similar in both pictures. However, I think I slightly prefer the Adobe picture. It just looks a little bit uh, more detailed to my eyes. But in this case the difference is very very minimal. Based on these two sample pictures I would say the new Adobe Denoise feature does a really nice job. And I think if you're a Lightroom user there is absolutely no reason for you to buy a dedicated denoising app. And by the way I do have affiliate links for both DxO and Topaz down below, below the video. So if you decide to buy either one of those apps please use the links down below and support my channel at the same time. However if you are not a Lightroom user then DxO Puro 3 and Topaz Photo AI both are excellent denoising apps. And they also work as standalone apps. In this video I was using the Lightroom plugin but they work as a standalone app too. So you can use them with pretty much every raw developer. Unlike Adobe Lightroom you, you can't remove the denoising feature from Adobe Lightroom and use only that with another raw developer. These results are hardly conclusive. We only had a look at the two sample pictures but even based on these two pictures I think we can safely say that the new Adobe Denoise feature works really well. That's all I have for you today. I hope you found this video helpful and informative and if you did please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Your support means a lot to me and it makes it possible for me to make more of these videos for you guys. Thank you so much and I'll see you again in the next video.